Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes out as from Bratislav, The Doors, When the Music's Over. So that's what we're going to be checking out today. Uh, we've only checked out one song from The Doors, and that was years ago, and I had a real tough time coming to terms with what it was trying to do, and my mind was not quite as open, possibly, to what they were trying to do back then. I don't know where this song sits in relationship to that song, but let's dive into it and see what they're bringing to the table with When the Music's Over. So this is from 1967. Really cool dual rhythm idea here. We don't really have a strong sense of... Well, actually, our organ is giving us a sense of groove and rhythm. And of course, the drums are now, but previously, there wasn't a sense of rhythm to it. It was more melodic, which is a, a cool idea. When the music's over Yeah. When the music Very cool flourishy guitar line over here. Yeah. Seven beats of silence. That's pretty lengthy, especially at this slower tempo. I highly suspect somebody in the comments will tell me that I had not consumed enough drugs in order to fully appreciate this song. Yes. Something very adjacent to chromatic. It felt chromatic for like five notes, and then we started going into something a bit more chord based, but just lots of harmonic chaos there, which is interesting because there were only three instruments, but they still found lots of ways to create dissonance 
And of course, the general concept of dy volume dynamics here, which I enjoy. Cancel my subscription to the resurrection. <laughs> Just to return the form like that never happens. Send my credentials to the house of detention. I got some friends inside. There's a very tight tom drum in here. That one. The face in the mirror won't stop. The girl in the window won't drop. Anyways, there's just a, a higher tuned tom than I would expect in here. Very cool. It sounds like it might be a, a small one too. the bass over here just playing three notes I think just basically bouncing Before I sing, just bouncing between the two with a little bit of movement between them Here's something you wouldn't see in modern music. The center vocals kind of spread out a little bit to the right, but otherwise there's just nothing going on over here. Okay, drummer. Stuck her with knives in the side of the dawn and tied her with fences and dragged her down. I hear a very gentle sound. With your ear down to the ground. We want the world and we want it. We want the world and we want it. Now. Now. Interesting.
It's a little three against four polyrhythm there. I can already tell y'all. I don't know. I'm gonna. I don't know that I'm gonna have a strong grasp of the song enough to dissect it in any meaningful way. But there's a lot of cool things I want to talk about. So when the music's over. When the music's over, yeah. When the music's over, turn out the lights, turn out the lights, turn out the lights. What the music? Yeah, bringing that back from much earlier in the song. Oh, now Retardando here. All right. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I think I'm generally more receptive to this song than the last one that we checked out, but like I mentioned in the introduction too, that was several years ago and my mind, my mind has been opened since then. That's not to say that I was closed minded when we checked out that other track and I wish I could remember what it was, but we're talking 2020, 2021, I think when we looked at that one and otherwise I don't think I've listened to any of the doors outside of that. Maybe a few popular tracks that have shown up in, in film or something like that. Um, but yeah. I've listened to a lot of music over the past few years that I did not know existed. Not just the bands or the songs, but even the styles, the genres themselves. Um, and I've listened to a lot of stuff that has challenged my views of what makes music good. And I think if you go listen to any of my reactions from the first six months, you'll find a very different person than who is uh, doing these reactions, reviews, analyses, whatever you want to call them today. And so maybe it's not that this song is better or different in any way from that song, which is going to annoy me. I can't remember what it's called, but it might just be that I've changed over the years too, and that this is more palatable to me today. And maybe I still would have been a bit standoffish about it a few years back. Regardless, what's going on with this song? First of all, what I really like is that a majority of this track feels like it's blues inspired. And I say that not because I think it uses the blues chord, or sorry, blues scale, or that I think there's anything really bluesy about it, but it does remind me at least of playing blues music. The highs, the lows, the dynamic aspects, and the isolation of it all. There was a point in here, I guess it was about six or seven minutes into the track, and everything just came down. And it was the bass and the drums and the vocals. And something about this really quiet, intimate rhythm section plus lead melody felt bluesy to me. Again, not that they were using the blues scale. It wasn't harmonically bluesy, but just something about it felt like a, a type of blues rock, maybe. I don't know any better way to describe it. It's just the first thing that comes to mind is, oh, you know, I've, I've played stuff like this. You know, not like this. This is very clearly psychedelic rock, probably, in texture, in timbre, in harmony, in instrumentation. Like, it's definitely psychedelic rock. There's just something about it. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of bluesy. And retroactively, I began to think about the first half of the song. I was like, yeah, there kind of is a bluesy element to it. 
it goes in different directions, sure, but it continues to come back down to this very intimate, vulnerable, quiet section. That's what it always comes back to. And that always gives me like this half bluesy, half lounge kind of vibe. I don't know. Maybe that doesn't make sense to anybody else. But uh, I thought that was interesting. But we kick it off with a majority of this style right here. Synth, bass, drums, vocals, guitar. Simple, quiet, sparse. That's how the song kicks off. Eventually, we add more things to it. We remove things. We add different combinations of things. We remove one thing from this place, add one thing over there, all sorts of stuff. And we explore a lot of variations of this combination of instruments in a multitude of ways. We embody that quieter, more intimate sound. We have sections that are noisy harmonically and volume wise the dynamics just filling up the sound sphere with a lot of chaotic things uh, we have solos all sorts of stuff and it's interesting that they can take this baseline idea these five instruments and explore so many different vibes that all work together and i think that really is the important part for me anyways is that as chaotic and disconnected as some of the sections are they made sense in the the narrative of the song everything seemed to flow together rather well and that's one of the things that really stood out to me we had the crescendos we had the day crescendos the rising of volume falling of volume we had the retardando at the end bringing the speed down even those sections where we have those seven beats of silence, which we heard earlier on in the track and then really close at the end, I mentioned, you know, as a nice callback, it allows all the instruments to reverberate and naturally taper off. And then for the vocals to come in with like two beats of quiet, intimate, very airy, breathy sounds to sort of swing us back into it before the other instruments come back in. There's there's this natural element of evolution in this song that no matter what we're doing, it feels connected to where we came from and leads the way for where we are going. And so despite this, the large swings and ideas across this song, it feels like a cohesive work of art. And I think that that's important for something like this. Uh, because there are some hurdles, at least for me. You know, this is going to be subjective. But there's a lot of stuff in here that makes it difficult for me to listen to. First of all, I'm listening to it on headphones. And the more that I listen to music from this era, the more I realize that a lot of the music was designed for speakers. Especially something like this, where we do have some of the instruments hard panned off to the side with two speakers in front of me offset that creates a very different field where the sounds come from rather than piping it into my ears directly you know 90 degrees from my front one way and the other it creates the separation of the song and i wish there was just a better way to go about it i have <clears throat> decent speakers that i can use but if i play through there the microphone's going to pick that up and muddy this up there just isn't a really great way to go about doing that. Unless I did what a lot of other reactors do, which is pause the music. And I'm just not going to do that. It disrupts the flow of the song. Everything that I just talked about, how great the flow is, I would never have picked up on. Because my understanding of the song would have been segmented completely opposite of how they wrote it it would have been a, a huge disservice and a slap in their face i think just very disrespectful for me to say this song should not be listened to in its entirety you should chop it up as a first time listen so i don't know i'm not i'm not saying that other reactors are disrespectful for doing it that way i think there's pros and cons to both styles of reaction but as somebody who writes music with intent of how it's supposed to be listened to, pacing and flow and stuff like that, I would not want my music listened to chopped up. I'm not going to listen to somebody else's chopped up. Um, so yeah, I mean, 
the end result is that I get something that I think is a little less optimal sonically on a production level. And I just kind of have to overcome that because my end result is that the instruments feel very distant from one another. And I don't think that's how it would normally be if I used speakers, but I can only imagine what it would sound like otherwise. But yeah, having them hard pan to the side is very much a product of its time. It's not like it's something that the Doors did exclusively, but as we listen to older tracks, especially stuff from the 60s and even some stuff from the early 70s, you get that really hard panning that just worked better for what they had at the time, which is mostly speakers. And it's not so, it doesn't do so well with headphones. But yeah, that was one little hurdle I had. The other, of course, is the dissonance. We have two sections in this track that are very much focused on tense chords. It's not even just the tense chords either. Those are not great. I think I've definitely made some faces. Dissonance in general can be very uh, nails on a chalkboard for me. It was here. But it's not just the harmonic dissonance either. It, it's the organ and the guitar just doing whatever they want. Basically being in their own world. Um, sometimes even the bass in the center or the drums in the center were doing their own thing too. And it's just a cacophony of noise sounding like a, a warm up before a concert more so than the music itself. Now, there can certainly be reason for this. One, maybe they just like it, right? There doesn't have to be a purpose for it. It just sounded good to them. But it could also line up with something going on in the lyrics, some sort of clash or dissonance in the narrative that they wanted to represent musically. There's certainly artistic purposes for it. And there's also just preference. Some people like that sound. There is an entire genre of dissonant metal. I don't remember what subgenre. Maybe it's dissonant death metal i don't remember it's in the genre though the word there you listen to that and you're gonna be in for some harsh harmonies people like it there's an audience for that kind of stuff but what i do find interesting though isn't so much of its usage although well kind of in a roundabout way i'm trying to figure out if anything else anybody else was doing this at the time because when I hear that, I think of modern noise rock, stuff that came out of the 80s and 90s, um, like Sonic Youth. Am I, am I right on that? I get some of my bands mixed up. I listen to a lot of artists. <laughs> but I think Sonic Youth is that noisy, punky band I'm thinking of uh, that got a lot of exposure and, and popularity in their era. But the concept of using dissonance became very popular in modern day. In fact, we have an entire subgenre of music based around dissonance. But also something else with the two instruments panned off to the side made me immediately think of the Mars Volta. They usually have two guitars or maybe a guitar and a saxophone sometimes doing two totally different things, clashing rhythmically, clashing melodically, clashing harmonically, lots of dissonance all over the place, very chaotic music at times. It sounds a lot like what The Doors was doing here. Did I say were? Like it's The Doors, but they're a singular band. It feels weird to say The Doors and then use the singular was. <laughs> but I suppose that's right. What The Doors was doing here. Anyways, uh, yeah. Like I said, I'm just curious if anybody else was doing anything like this. I have the same problem I do with this as I do with the Mars Volta. It's too chaotic for me. It, it kind of lacks that palatability. But there's also this cool thing of were they ahead of their time? How popular were the doors when this came out in 67? 68? When did I say? 67. Mm -hmm. Is this something that grew in popularity over the years as people's ears developed for it? Or was it something that people immediately vibed with? Because nowadays, like I said, there's huge audiences for stuff like this. This dissonant, chaotic rock. But was that always the case? I don't know. Something else that they might have been ahead of their time on is screaming, right? Okay, so there's like three main types of harsh vocals. 
One is false chord. That's your low growl stuff. I don't remember what the other one's called, but it's also primarily um, compression created in your throat, but it doesn't use your false chords. I don't remember how it works. I've been researching because I want to do harsh vocals, right? <laughs> Real harsh vocals, not the weird stuff I do. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then there's a third type, though, that sort of combines both of those with your natural coloring. And this is the one where you hear those harsh vocals and you distinctly know who it is because it puts their own natural stuff into it. This is stuff like your uh, your Chester Bennington's, um, your dude from Deftones. Why can't I think of his name? Um, early The Used with Burt McCracken, his early stuff before he damaged his throat and... Uh, kind of stop screaming for a while. But that third kind, where you put your own coloring on it, I kind of hear that here. It also just sounds like compressed cleans, though, a little bit, but it still works within that realm where it feels like his vocals with that grit on top of it. I don't know if you would technically call this harsh vocals. To me, he's screaming. That is a scream. <laughs> it might not be a metal scream, but it's still compressed vocals was he one of the first ones to do that too i mean maybe not in general uh, i can think of some funk people some funk singers who put some heavy compression on their cleans to get a bit of grit in there but to use it like this which feels very similar to modern day you know metal vocals i'm sure that that well i'm not sure i get the feeling that it might have not been super popular back then but absolutely works with a modern ear and so once again i'm kind of questioning was this popular at the time or were they ahead of their time you, you guys are gonna have to let me know about that because these are some things that i've listened to this and i'm thinking 67 would anybody have been ready for this? So, you know, I just don't have a lot of context for those those older decades of music. But I, it's pretty cool that I can hear, maybe not direct influences, but definitely ways that this sound has evolved and been utilized in modern music in more palatable ways, or at least what's more palatable today than might have been back then. Um... I think the last thing I want to bring up, though, before we hit some lyrics, is structure. What is the structure of this track? It is simultaneously cyclical and linear. As I'm listening to it, I'm like, okay, that's new. That's new. That's new. Wait, is that new? No, it actually has this one part from back here, but then this drum part from back here, and a brand new bass part, but the synth kind of reminds me of that part back there, and like, it it folds in on itself in so many ways, um, and it, it constantly comes back to some of these core motifs, even if they're not in the same combination of motifs as we've heard them prior, and so I do think that most of this is presenting itself as new sections, but also some of them are remixes or variations on sections that we heard previously, in which case they're still new but have elements of something we've heard in the past. And so the whole time, it feels like we're pushing forward in a linear way, but it feels like we're pushing forward by looping backwards. Does that make sense? Like a series of continuous loop-de-loops that somehow end us back where we started. Yeah, there's like some fifth-dimensional construct there don't try to think about that too hard it's just it continued to boggle my mind it was really difficult to get any sort of footing or grounding on this track and the few sections that felt completely new to me where i couldn't recognize anything also were the most chaotic and cacophonous so it was difficult to get a solid ground on those too because they abandoned any sort of consonant writing in favor of dissonance and chaos It's an interesting track, and I, I don't, like I said, at the end, near the end of the track, I don't really know that I have a strong concept of it. I don't know what's going on. I don't really get a strong narrative throughout it. It just, every moment, I kind of get what's happening there. This one's moody. This one's crazy. This one's uh, you know, wild. This one's back to being a mood. And 
in the moment they all kind of make sense, but trying to piece that together into something overall, I don't know. Emotionally, it kind of feels fragmented, but like I said, compositionally, it's very smooth moving. It's certainly a song that requires more than one listen, but I do think I want to throw some praise towards the door for their ability to smash together so many contradicting ideas and form it into something that feels like a single song. <laughs> That I don't think there's very many songs that I could describe in so many so many opposite to, uh, ways. Where the song is both harmonious and dissonant. And where it's also fully formed and fluid from one idea to the next, but also very segmented. They just uh, approach these concepts on, on various paths, where like the emotions feel segmented but musically it's a fluid idea and stuff like that and so it creates a, a song of contradictions that contradictorily also feels congruent with itself uh i don't know let me hit some lyrics and probably get confused about those too lyrically it's a little sub sub uh, segmented as well i don't know what word i was looking for we kick it off with three times through the chorus. The third time's a little different, but retains many of the same rhythmic elements and cadence, just changes the words up a little bit while retaining a similar idea. But after that, we hit several verses back to back, six of them, followed by a bridge and our final two choruses. Those six verses are all semi-connected by... They're, they're thin threads. They really are. But they all do kind of bleed into another in some way or another. It's sort of like the music where it is also segmented but fluid in some way. It all makes sense. But when I look at them individually, I'm like, ah, that's not really, they're not really connected. But they kind of have thematic ties, very loose thematic ties. The chorus says when the music's over turn out the lights. That's it. It repeats a lot of that. When the music's over, when the music's over, when the music's over, turn out the lights, turn out the lights, turn out the lights. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's just, that's our chorus. When the music's over, turn out the lights. And then the post chorus, which is the chorus with a tiny change to it, says when the music's your special friend, dance on fire as it intends. Music is your only friend until the end, until the end, until the end. I kind of get where this is coming from. I'm trying to place myself 50 years prior. And part of that 50 years prior is like 20 years prior to my birth. <laughs> it's really difficult to get into the mindset of a, a period of time that I have zero connection to at all. The, the 60s were just, even the 70s, I just don't, again, I don't have any connection to. Even the 80s, when I, you know, I wasn't born in the 80s, but I, I get the 80s. <laughs> I don't get the 60s or 70s. So I'm trying to place myself in this mindset. And I think the idea here is that music to this vocalist. Or maybe just a narrative of a character is special to them. Music allows them to feel things or to express themselves in ways or whatever that they can't normally. It gives them a place to be intimate. And it says, take that energy and dance. It says, dance on fire as it intends. Allow the music to flow through you. So up until this point, it just talks about how great music is. And when the music's over, turn out the lights. To me, that says when there's no more magic, that's when life ends. To me, that's a metaphorical turning out of the lights. From here, though, the song shifts entirely, <laughs> moving to our six verses. Verse 1 says, Cancel my subscription to the resurrection. Send my credentials to the house of detention. I got some friends inside. The annotation says that we should take this in a religious idea, that the resurrection should be going up to heaven after we die, and the house of detention is hell. It says, Send my credentials there. I have some friends. 
maybe that's what's being alluded to. I'm not quite sure. Interestingly, later on though, in verse or sorry, in the bridge, it says "Save us, Jesus, save us," which seems to run a, seems to be antithetical to this verse right here. So I'm not entirely sure how to read that. Verse 2 says the face in the mirror won't stop. The girl in the window won't drop. A feast of friends. Alive, she cried, waiting for me outside. It goes along with the idea of friends from verse 1, but not quite sure what we should be thinking about here. Verse 3 says before I sink into the big sleep, I want to hear the scream of the butterfly. I don't know. The annotation says that this person just wants change. They want to experience something new and possibly something chaotic. They're tired of the mundane. Maybe? <laughs> Verse 4 says, Come back into my arms. We're getting tired of hanging around, waiting around with our heads to the ground. I can hear a very gentle sound, very near, yet very far, very soft, yet very clear. Come today, come today. Flows in a way that I enjoy, syllabically, rhythmically. What does it mean, though? I don't know. Verse 5 pushes all of this into an, an uh, ecological standpoint. It says, what have they done to the earth? What have they done to our fair sister? Ravaged and plundered and ripped her and bit her, stuck her with knives in the side of the dawn and tied her with fences and dragged her down. Yep. Not quite sure what that has to do with everything else, though. Verse 6, six brings us back to verse 4. Hearing something as they put their head to the ground. It says, I hear a very gentle sound with your ear down to the ground. We want the world and we want it now. And the chorus brings us back to when the music's over. Turn out the lights. The music's your special friend. Dance on the fire. Music's your only friend until the end. Much like the lyrics of The End, which I had to go look it up, that The End is the song we checked out last time. The lyrics are cacophonous. They're all over the place. It feels almost as if he's singing about whatever he's currently thinking about. Very stream of consciousness. And when that thought is over and we have another musical interlude, we come to the next verse and he's on a different wavelength entirely, singing about something else. There is that small thread in here of wanting to free yourself, to get outside of the confines of normality, to get away from the religion that was a dominating mindset of things in the days, to get away from the, the quiet calm, to explore things that hadn't been seen before, a screaming butterfly, to feel alive. to hear things of, of wanting to take the world back away from those who are ruining it. But like I said before, it's kind of a, a small thin thread that ties it all together. And at least from my perspective, it feels easily broken that these ideas aren't so easily bound into a single thought. I don't know. Is it stream of consciousness? Is it all intended to be read as a singular vision or a feeling? I don't know. Much like the music, it kind of works all together, but it also feels very segmented. And somehow they've achieved the impossible of having these contradictory descriptions both be accurate on the musical and the lyrical level. Those are my thoughts on the doors when the music's over. Let me know what your thoughts are. If any of this makes sense to you, if you have anything you'd like to add on to what I said, or correct me on. I'm not perfect, and this is far outside of my usual area of knowledge, so I'm sure I might have said some things that weren't 100% correct. Please, I'm here to learn just as much as everyone else is. Hopefully you learned a little bit as well. They do some cool things in here, and I picked up on some of those cool things, but understanding the whole piece... No, I'm out of my depth. I've been thrown into the deep end and given one chance to swim or drown. <laughs> and uh, I picked drown, so, so throw me a life preserver. <laughs> what a weird metaphor. All right. Uh, what are the... Yeah, leave some comments down in the comment section. Let me know what's up. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree 
takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.